Hello everyone. So welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So yesterday we have uploaded uh, the video on one why one should not use the fake experience in their resumes to get a job in software testing field or interview calls. So we have been receiving emails and comments like what should be the approach? How should we get the job in software testing if we are working in non-IT fields or we are having some sort of career gaps, right? So over here in this video, we have covered the important skill set that one needs to have to start as a software tester, right? If one wants to shift the career from non-ID background to the testing field, then which all the which are the important skill set that one should have, right? So the very first thing is one should know the fundamentals of software development testing life cycle. You know now many of us. Uh, we might be working in mechanical background. We might be working in test. Uh, we might be working in uh, civil engineering, right? Or we might be working in BPO. So we are not that much aware about how the software has been developed. What is the end-to-end -end flow? Which are the various activities that one need? One is taking care when, as a team, when they are doing any software development or when testing is happening. So those fundamentals of software development testing lifecycle are important. Mm -hmm. Like. What is requirement analysis? Why it is important? What, what are the things that we write or which are documented in BRD, FRD, right? Why all those documentations are necessary, right? So these things are important. Then when it comes to software testing lifecycle, so, so there are various, you know, uh, again, stages of software testing lifecycle, right? So again, we have various models in that vnb model is there then uh, which are the various phases by when the development is also done then testing is also done so these things one needs to be prepared right then the manual testing concepts like defect life cycle bug life cycle right then what is the difference between severity and priority why it holds an importance that is also important then you can also refer about the test cases right now if now, which are the various test cases? How will you test something? How will you test one particular software? So this is a skill set that you need to develop, right? So you can start from the things itself. You can start from any pen, bottle, pen drive, these kind of things. And slowly and gradually, you can move to the next level. Like if there is any particular website you are seeing, if any e-commerce website which you are using for purchasing something like Amazon Flipkart, so how will you test, how will you validate whether all those functionality, all those features are working fine or not, right? So these things you have to develop. What you can do is you can take one pen and paper and you can jot down all the test cases, test scenarios. You can revisit those things again on the next day and think again from a creative angle, again from a different angle. If you have missed any test case, if you have missed any test scenario, basically how will you make sure that it is working as per the expected guidelines? So that's how you have to use, you have to learn. Test case management tool, these tools are available in the market, right? Even if you're not having any hands-on experience on test case management tool, you can at least start writing test cases in the Excel file, right? There are various templates available online that which are the various fields, which are the various things that should be there in the Excel file to incorporate, to write down the test cases. Then, you should also have some knowledge on the database. You can learn any of the database, whichever is easier to you, SQL, Oracle. You can start with MS Access database as well, right? And you will come to know how the database, how the backend things plays an important role in software testing. You know, many a times it might not be required as per the job description or as per the requirement of the role, but it is good to have this knowledge of SQL, the backend technologies, right? Then any programming language, any one programming language, any basics of programming language which you feel easy, you can take Java, Python, or C Sharp. Why I haven't written C Sharp over here? Because it is very less used compared to Java and Python. So you can go through the videos available on these programming languages and you can get some expertise on these languages. Basically, these things would be helpful to you to, to do the automation scripting, to write the, to develop automation scripts, right? And at the end, you know, one last thing, which is not mandatory, 
but it is good to have is kind of certification. So yesterday in the videos also, uh, there were many comments that which certification you are talking about. So it was about ISTQB foundation level you can start or CAST, whichever certifications you can go for, at least what these things will do. You know, you can put these kind of logos or uh, academic marks or kind of certification level achievements you can put in your CV. In your resume this would automatically dominate your non-it experience right if you have done the certifications of testing for software testing level so it is very good you know you can put these kind of ISTQB foundation logo on your resume on your cv as well right so it will give uh it will it will give a good insight to the recruiter who is actually searching the resumes. He will come to know, okay, he's, uh, he's actually certified. He might be from a non-IT background. He might be having some kind of career gap, but it is good to have, right? So these are few of the skills. And at the end, last but not least, I forgot to mention over here is about agile methodology, right? So in many of the companies in which you might get hired, they might be working on agile, right? So what is sprint? what is sprint planning, what is sprint backlog. So get an idea on these concepts because they would be working, they would be using these terms and terminal, terminologies in the IT industry in their day-to-day -day, daily, daily basis, right? So it's good if you get some good understanding on agile methodology, right? So go through these concepts, go through these uh, things and these are all the required skills if you want to begin, if you want to start your career as a software tester, irrespective if you are you know, from a non-IT background or if you if you are having some career gap or if you are not able to uh, pursue your career due to XYZ health reasons, if you want to start your career as a software tester, then these are the bare minimum skills that one should have. And once you are having such kind of skill set, once you are good confident from your side that you can now attend the interviews, then you can start giving mock interviews. You can give interviews. You can also interview on or you can also schedule an interview with us you can send your resume at rd automation learning at gmail.com and we would conduct an interview for you so you can also come to know what what are the challenges or which are the topics still you want to revisit as a part of you know software testing and this would be free of cost just one terms and conditions is there that it would be uploaded on our youtube channel right so you need to have a good internet connection as well. So that's it for this video. Stay tuned for more updates. And thank you so much for watching this video.